So through personal experience of, of engaging with the tensions of environmental decision making, many at the Centre for Alternative Technology had come to the conclusion that it was impossible to achieve a wholly sustainable life in contemporary society. This recognition had led many to manage the situation through adopting a politics of pragmatism. This strategy involved a practical environmentalism that, in the words of Paul Chatterton, works towards the bigger picture through intermediate and pragmatic steps, which involve compromises. These pragmatic and intermediate steps involve a range of everyday actions, from encouraging the use of energy-efficient light bulbs, to compromises that involve using the car for work, as the following uh, responding outlines. I guess I've been a bit more pragmatic, I guess. More in the way of changing things and telling people what I can do, rather than, say, go and live in a little hut on a small holding and do your own things and disconnect yourself from society. That sort of thing, which perhaps isn't for everyone. That's not the way to mainstream these solutions. So working from the inside and trying to affect as many people as, as you can who come here from Birmingham, for example, on a day out, that's what they would position themselves. So these individuals therefore choose not to adopt either a strategy of segregation or a strategy of alignment for their reformed identity, but rather adopt a pragmatic strategy of incremental integration. Individuals choose to, choose to cope with the inevitability of compromise when becoming green by acknowledging there would always be activities they had little immediate power to change. Due to example, due to structures of state decision making, familial obligation, what the missus tells them they are, uh, they are allowed or not allowed to do, or broader cultural pressure, of which we're all uh, faced with some, to some degree or other. But by also committing to consistently adopting those changes that were possible. This strategy of incremental integration of environmental ideals into everyday life was recognised as far from perfect, but enabled a life to be led which was positioned on a green trajectory and was free from the guilt or paralysis about what was possible for any individual to achieve as the following respondents outline. I would certainly describe myself on the greener side of things, but I wouldn't necessarily claim myself to be terri terribly green on that half of the pitch. I think you can make quite a big impact without doing an awful lot. Changing your bank account means your money is not about to be invested in certain spaces that you might be unhappy about. You can do things like making your home more energy efficient, just trying to get into good habits, rather than thinking, I can't put up solar panels, which is a big investment, so I can't make huge changes. Or... So often it's about little things that make the difference, like not leaving your TV on standby, and things like that, which are a big energy saving. <coughs> so thus the politics of pragmatism has been enacted by some at the Centre for Alternative Technology in order to negotiate the tensions involved in becoming green. This politics positions trajectories, individuals on a trajectory that aims for an environmentally benign life, knowing that this is a constantly moving target, and one that is probably unobtainable in any absolute sense. This politics of pragmatism has a number of effects. Firstly, it requires individuals to regularly reflect on their lifestyle choices and their changing material and social contexts. This reflexivity informs new actions or inactions in order to reposition individuals back onto a greener trajectory. This reflexivity and perpetual rebalancing means emphasis is placed on action and future change rather than on a, this sense of guilt which may threaten to destabilise the self and disempower environmental action. Finally, this project of pragmatism changes what becoming green means. This pragmatic approach transforms the radical edge of environmentalism and ecotopia into something more recognisable as eco-modernisation. Due to the tensions created by the saturation of consumerism into modern culture, the vast majority of individuals seek some benefits of the capitalist system despite the negative implications they may induce. From this perspective, the practical edge of environmentalism has thus been transformed. It is no longer about being an escape from consumer society or forging a revolution in the mainstream, but turning the TV off the wall. As one respondent says, there's been this progression in their own environmental <coughs> trajectory, if you like, from where it started when they first moved to Cat, from fervent religious extremism through to this process of everyday pragmatism. And for them at least, that's natural, I guess. That's perhaps where we all end up. So from this perspective, therefore, environmentalism as a radical project is dead. Nevertheless, the politics of environmental pragmatism does offer hope for a greener future. Adopting a strategy of incremental integration 
of environmental ideals into everyday life could realise a sustainable future through commitment and compromise. To put it in the lexicon of consumerist society, it's not possible for everyone to get rich quick, unless perhaps we win your millions or something. And similarly, it's highly unlikely to get green quick, even for those at the centre for alternative technology. There are no shortcuts to an environmental future. The roadmap to sustainability involves a long journey and many steps. The following respondent at CAT uses a similar analogy. He says you're never doing the best you can. There's always what should I do and how could I do it? Everyone has that tension. But some it's about cars and mainstream society and you always want the bigger one or the better one or the faster one. You know, I must get that brand new BMW, I'm sure some people think. Everyone is bullied by this, they say. But for me, that same tension drives me towards reducing my carbon footprint rather than aspiring to a new commodity. So this, therefore, is a, the adoption of a strategy of incremental integration. Individuals that have found it possible to reframe environmental problems into positive actions that they can do to change their lives. In short, they have transformed their tensions into something they can practically and emotionally manage on their way to becoming green. So this strategy of incremental integration attempts to encourage individuals, whether they be <coughs> in utopias, such as the Centre for Alternative Technology, or in mainstream spaces, to embark on a green trajectory through instigating small changes, by recycling, by composting, by switching to green electricity, or turning the TV off on the wall. These low-hanging fruit of environmental action may, or indeed may not, significantly affect ecological footprints of individuals, depending on the overall ecological impact that they have in the first place. But the broader intent is there to generate a culture of engagement which sees environmental action not as pious and hair-shirted as Bedford has termed it, but as normal and practicable. Crucially, these small changes are not intended to be the beginning of the end for environmental action, but simply the end of the beginning. These small changes are part of a broader, genuine commitment to an environmentally benign trajectory that becomes more realistic the more it is imagined and the more it is lived. That it is recognised by those at CAT that in and of themselves, these small cultural shifts will not be enough to enact a sustainable future. There are limits to individual action, this individualisation of the environmental problem that we started with. And these limits will remain unless tackled directly by elected stakeholders and corporate shareholders. As the following respondent concludes... There are dead obvious choices, like whether to go to tra by train to Paris or to fly to Paris. And then there are various factors which are much harder to change, a kind of structural problem in the way we are set up as a society. So thus, the limits to individual action as a solution to the environmental problem are acknowledged by many within the Centre for Alternative Technology. The strategy of incremental integration will only overcome these limits when it establishes, establishes a broader culture, which, in which includes governments and stakeholders, in its commitment to an environmental trajectory. Its broader adoption of this politics of pragmatism thus becomes a key challenge for environmentalism where we are in the second decade of the 21st century. Thank you.